I passed the OSCP exam in about 12 hours with 100 points. This is my guide to help you prepare as best as you can. Hi and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell so you don't miss any future video. Now before we start, I must stress that the following is from my own experience only, so be sure to experiment and find what works best for you. We have a lot to cover today, so if you could hit that like button for me now, I promise this should be good information. So let's start with clarifying the OSCP exam details, and I'll try to keep this quick. It's a 23 hour and 45 minute exam. It is proctored, so your webcam will be on the entire time with all your screens being monitored. It will require you to attain a total of 70 points, which is made up from exploiting vulnerable machines. Points are granted when you attain a shell as well as root. Five points can also be awarded for the successful submission of a lab report. The exam also forbids you from using auto exploit tools like SQL map, as well as Metasploit, which is a little bit confusing, so I'll try to clear this up. You can use this to exploit one machine only. This also includes the use of the Meterpreter payload. However, you can use tools within the framework multiple times. These include things like MSF Venom, MSF Pattern, and the Multi Handler. After the 24 hour period is up, you have a further 24 hours to write and submit a report which details all the steps that you took to exploit the machines. So these are things that you should have done before you take on the exam. And firstly, the lab report. While this is still kind of optional in my view, it is tedious and mostly a waste of time, but there are a few nice little tips and tricks you'll gain along the way and fill in these knowledge gaps. And it also helps getting that extra five points. Do all the lab machines, but if you're short on lab time, then consider ignoring some of the client side exploits. Do supplementary machines, things like Vonhub, Hack the Box, and the Offsec Proving Ground, which I call OSPG. I personally recommend the OSPG over anything else because these machines have the closest feel to the PWK labs. And these are divided into two categories. The play category is great for that sort of confidence boost. These are generally pretty easy machines to smash out, but they have some fun and interesting twists along the way. The practice machines are really good for having machines that really closely resemble the PWK labs, which should help you best prepare for the exam. Tiberius also has guides on Windows and Linux privilege escalation, and these courses are on Udemy. These will consolidate your privilege escalation knowledge and show some cool tricks along the way. TJ Null has a list of Hack the Box machines, which did teach me a lot and it was a lot of fun. However, I find Hack the Box is just a bit too niche and doesn't really have the same flavor as, P as the PWK labs. So I wouldn't recommend doing too much of this. Tiberius also has a buffer overflow room on Try Hack Me to optimize your workflow. There's 10 buffer overflows to do. So I highly recommend checking that out. So we kind of get it in our heads that smashing out as many lab machines will best prepare you for the exam. And while this is kind of great for rote learning and it is good to get that exposure, don't forget to review all your notes from every machine that you've done. Look for common themes and exploit paths and common privilege escalation paths. I promise this will actually go a long way at knowledge consolidation. And also consider doing a 24 hour practice exam to get you used to the exam conditions. I did this with the machines Alpha, Beta and Gamma and as well as a buffer overflow. This was a great little confidence boost while getting me a bit more comfortable with that sort of setting. You should consider booking your exam around the time where your lab pass ends. Sadly, there's a whole month lockout if you fail your first attempt, which will only scale longer on multiple failed attempts. So it's best to get your first attempt in early, but also don't feel like you're being rushed. So in total, I did about 150 machines, which is definitely overkill. Uh, all of these machines can be found in a link in the description. So the following are key technical skills that I think you need to understand incredibly well before taking on the exam. Spawning shells and knowing multiple alternatives if one way doesn't work is critical. Same with file transfers both to and from victim machines. 
Also make sure you know alternatives for this as well. You should have great enumeration skills, especially for the common services. Efficient enumeration will save you a lot of time. You should also know how to do web exploits, especially the server side ones, really well. And you should also understand key application and OS configuration files. So be sure to just mess around on your virtual machines for a while as well. Understanding the main privilege escalation vectors will go a long way and Tiberius's course will be quite good for this. And you should also have the ability to read and understand exploits, but also know when things are appearing to be a bit too complex and know when to move on. Drill your buffer overflows to get the process down pat and be able to solve these in under about 30 minutes. Now let's go over your exam strategy for the day. I started at 9am, which means I was ready at 8.30am to go through the setup process. When you start, take time to organise your notes and know what machines you need to target and what their point values are. Honestly, taking these 5 minutes will just help ease the nerves a bit and get you organised for the rest of the day. Start up auto recon for the 4 machines, excluding the buffer overflow of course, and then move on to that buffer overflow. This all should be done within the first hour or so. Once you've done that, move on to either the 25 pointer or any of the 20s. Just pick the one that looks most approachable to you. Save the 10 pointer for when you need to get that little bump in your points to get over the line. Use your Metasploit budget as well. I recommend doing this on the lowest hanging fruit as this tool is great to save a bit of time. But make sure you enumerate well and only use it if you're relatively sure that it's going to work as you'll lose your budget otherwise. So now onto some general tips and overall mindset. If you get stuck, try simpler, not harder. This exam won't require you to know everything about computer science. It's an exam built to be passed within 24 hours, even though at the time it doesn't seem like it. So don't overthink it, give it a good go and move on if you need to. Understand how to connect the dots and don't be afraid to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Maybe you have to chain multiple exploits together. Nerves and anxiety is a bitch, and it really inhibits your cognitive ability to concentrate clearly. Do as much as you can to reduce stress and anxiety, and take it easy on the caffeine. Be sure to have plenty of food and snacks at arm's length as well. Now a quick note about the proctoring and just general setup. A few days before the exam, you'll get an email with the credentials for your proctor portal. So be sure to use those and log in about 20 to 30 minutes before your exam to get set up. Make sure you check your webcam before you go in because mine wasn't working. You'll follow some basic checks and have to show things like your ID and scan the room with your webcam. Then your exam will start at the scheduled time. You'll receive an email and in that will contain all your target machines and your OVPN file. Do not use any screen recording software as this is prohibited and may risk you failing your exam. Just don't risk it. So what should you do if you fail? Well, to begin with, don't beat yourself up. It happens to most of us and I'm no different. Be happy with the progress that you've made because this exam is tough. Book in your next exam straight away and take a short break to catch your breath. Then review your findings. And this includes things like NMAP scans, server scans, or your privilege escalation script outputs. Reviewing these with a clearer head, you'll almost likely find your mistake straight away. If you get stuck on exploiting something, see if you can download the software from ExploitDB and practice in your own lab and time. It's highly unlikely that you'll ever see the same machine again, but at least you can learn from your mistakes. And remember, if you put in the work, then you can do this. When studying, I looked at solutions, I went on forums and Discord, but I always made sure that I would learn from the times that I sought out help. So don't believe it when you think that you're different from everybody else and that you're not good enough. This is just total bullshit. You've got this. Anyway, thanks for sticking around till the end. Please keep in mind, again, that all of this is based off my own experience. So be sure to check out other people's advice and most importantly, trust your own judgment. So when's your exam attempt? Be sure to let me know in the comments so I can wish you good luck. Or if you've done the exam, let us know any of the tips you'd like to share. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.